and it gives me great pleasure to present this young man, amen. I've been knowing him for 20 plus years, amen. And we have seen him grow in this ministry. He has the anointing of intercession upon his life. He is the head of our intercessory prayer team and he is the head of our evangelism team. He's one of the elders of this house. He stayed in position. The Spirit of the Lord brought his wife to him and his family to him right here at Jump Ministries Global Church. So it gives me great pleasure to present and I ask that you would join me in welcoming none other than Elder Lamont Plummer. Give God honor and glory as he comes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's give the Lord some praise. Not me. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Y'all, let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we just bless you on this morning, oh God. We give you praise, God. And Father, we give you honor, God. We give you thanks, oh God. And Father, we just say thank you for your amazing grace, God. Thank you for your mercy, oh God. And Father, thank you for allowing us, oh God, to be in the house of the Lord on this morning. What a privilege and an honor to be here, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we welcome you in this place, God. Spirit of the living God, we say have your way. We welcome your anointing. We welcome your ministry. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, you said in your word, I'm a present help in the time of need, God. So, Father, I need you right now. Remove me out the way, God, in the name of Jesus, God. They don't need to hear from me. They need to hear from you, oh God. So, God, let your anointing, let it be a word from heaven, oh God, a word that brings change, God. God, a word that is strengthen and encourage, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. And God, we also decree and declare over this service, God, no weapon formed against us going to prosper, God. God, we command every antichrist spirit, any spirit that's not like Christ, we rebuke it out of here in the authority of Jesus Christ, oh God. And God, we say, have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, God. You said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw me into myself, God. So, Father, it's our desire, our will, God, that we lift you up, oh God. Not just in our talk, God, but in our hearts, God, in our lifestyle, oh God. God, be lifted up, oh God, in this place. Be glorified, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's get a Lord of praise in here. Hallelujah, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. And I just want to um, give honor what honor is due to our bishop, our first lady, in the absence. Um, Y'all, let's put our hands together for our bishop, our man of God, our superman, everything. How many of y'all don't know that, but he's in the Bahamas? And he's been in the Bahamas, but as I was thinking about him, it reminded me when they had the earthquake in Hades. Nobody was allowed over there. But some kind of way, Bishop found his way over there. So if, you, if you've been watching the news, the Bahamas, been, the airport been flooded, no boats or nothing, but Bishop is over there. So I'm like, I don't know how he do it. He moving faith, but God just opened them doors. Whether he take a boat, but he's in the Bahamas right now where we can't even go to the Bahamas. But God, it's all for God's glory. Whenever you're doing something for God's glory, God opened up them doors. Amen? I ain't going to be before you long. It's just a couple of things God put on my heart. I was like, Lord, what would you have me say? God, don't let me just get up here, but what would you have me say? There's a couple of scriptures I got. I'm going to read some of them. I'm going to ask us to follow along with some of them. Amen? Y'all, let's go to 1 John chapter 5. Hallelujah, God, you're worthy. Now, I also want to give honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit for my wife. <laughs> My wife, my kids, like Pastor Ellis said, God brought all that to me. Here, I came here as a single man 20 years ago, going on 21 years next year, and God added to me. And it was all him, it was not me. But I just want to give honor to Lord Toya. She over in the children's church, and Dion, and Leah, and Christian, and Aaron. Trust me, they want all their names called out. <laughs> Trust me. So I know y'all will watch this later, but I thank God for y'all. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John, let me find it. First John, chapter 5. Let's start off at verse 6. Everybody got it? Let's go. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is the truth. For these three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Amen. Let's go to Leviticus 14. Just to open it up. Leviticus chapter 14. Let me know where you have it. I'm trying to get it. Hallelujah. These three bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we know that. Hallelujah. God have your way in this place. Leviticus 14. Verses 14. Leviticus 14, verse 14. The priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is being cleansed, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil, the anointed oil, and pour it into the palm of his left hand. Then the priest shall dip his right finger into the oil, and this is his left hand, and he shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times. How many times? Seven times before the Lord. And the rest of the oil in his hand, the priest shall put some on the tip of the right ear of him who is being to be cleansed. And on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. And on the big toe of his right foot on the blood of the trespassing offering. And skip over to verse 25. Same chapter, verse 25. First Leviticus 14, verse 25. Then he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering and put it on the tip of the right ear, and on him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour some of the oil, this is the anointed oil, into the palm of his hand on his own left hand. Then the priest shall sprinkle it, his right finger and some of the oil that is on his left hand seven times before the Lord. And the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear and on him who is to be cleansed on the thumb on the right hand and on the big toe of his right foot on the place of the blood of the trespassing offering. Every time in scripture, I'm going to stop right there, you see the blood, the, the oil always goes with it. If God say, apply the blood, right behind it, he say, apply the spirit. And we know about the blood. We in church, we know the blood of Jesus. We know the blood of Jesus atones us. It covers our sin. It washes away. The blood of Jesus gives us access. You know what I'm saying? We plead the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. We know that. You know, without the blood, there's no salvation. You know what I'm saying? We, we dead in our sin. It's Jesus when he shed his blood. And we know that as church. But this, today, this morning, I want to talk about something else. Because wherever you see the blood, you see the Spirit. The oil. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. I want to talk about God's presence. God's anointing on our life. Wherever in the Old Testament the priests applied the blood, the blood sanctifies. The blood sanctifies, but the oil consecrates. What I mean by consecration? Consecration means separate from darkness into light. When you consecrate something, it's saying darkness can't touch it. So that's why when we washed in the blood, God filled us with his spirit. Because he's consecrating us, but he's consecrating us for what? It's a purpose. You know what I'm saying? God called us to be filled with his spirit. And that's a privilege and an honor. That's why he gave us his Holy Spirit. But we must have the oil. We must have the Holy Spirit. When I say anointing, y'all gonna hear me say anointing, but I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Because he's not an it, it's a force. People teach different things. So you're gonna hear me saying the anointing, the anointing, the oil, the oil, but I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and the oil is all one. You can't be anointed without the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, it was just symbolic of God's Spirit. The three bear witness. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
the day we living in, this is a dispensation of the Holy Spirit. God the Father is in heaven. Jesus is sitting on his right hand. But we who are born again, who've been washed in the blood, is filled with his spirit. And the Holy Spirit fill us for a reason. The Holy Spirit come and take up residence with us. Put it back. You're messing me up. But anyways, um, we must have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And I'm going to show you today. Because each individual in here, God is a big God. God is humongous. We, we have not a clue. Just to give you a little glimpse, God has billions and millions of different inspirations. Or he um, inspires, expresses himself. That's the word I'm looking for in millions and billions of different ways. For one, you individually is a different expression of God. Nobody in here is the same. So your likes, your dislikes, everything. The way you see things, you see things the way nobody in here see things. So when God saved you and he created you, his job while he created you is to express himself through you. So if you like to draw, he want to express through that. Whatever you like to do, that's what God call you to. So we got to look at it. We all carry a personal anointing. And people always say, what am I called to do? But if you seek God and you chase after God, his anointing begin to show up and manifest in your life in different areas. And you will know what I'm called you to do. What I'm called to do is what he anointed you to do. If you do anything that he ain't anointed you to do, it's of the flesh. It ain't going to produce nothing in your life. So what you called to do, God know what you called to do. He got it for you, but you got to seek after it. So you have to spend time with God. You have to dwell in the secret place so you can bring forth your anointing. We need, everybody in here needs you to come forth in your anointing. If Anastasia up here dancing, there's no anointing and there's no change. But if she get up here and you going through and she anointed, she begin to spin, things begin to break off of you. We need her to be anointed. We need you. Everybody in here is different. The anointing is personal. So we got to get to the place. God needs his church to come forth. Hmm. God needs his church to come forth in your own personal individual anointing. We have to get in God's presence. Have your way, God. So you have to come forth. Mama O anointing is different than any anointing in here. Mama O can sing and I can sing, but when we get up here and we exercise our gift, the way God expresses through Mama O is different than the way she expresses through me. Because I used to always say, God, why do you want me to preach? You got plenty of preachers, but God had to teach me it's not the same. It may be the same thing, but it's not the same anointing. You have your own individual anointing, but you got to tap into it for it to come forth. That's what he saved us for. Just like I've been saved for 20 years listening to preachers and all that, but when Bishop preach, it's different than other preachers. I heard TDJ's preach, I heard them all preach, but when Bishop preach, you get downloads. His anointing is different than any other preacher. Your anointing on the inside of you is different than anybody anointing. But we got to come forth. It's, it's personal. And that's what God was saying, I want them to come forth. That's why the devil hate for us to spend time with God. You know what I'm saying? The devil want us to be in our flesh. Because he know when you come forth and you begin to seek after God, your anointing, what God put in you, that earthen vessel, that treasure that's in there, as it begin to break, God begin to release it. So we need everybody in here just know you are needed in the body of Christ. We one body. But when we all walk in an anointing, that's when God's church going to walk in victory. Amen? I hope I'm helping y'all. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. We have to come forth in that personal anointing. And that's what I'm talking about today, the anointing. Your anointing, what God anointed you to do. And that's what we struggle at. We walk in the flesh. Okay, then we walk in the anointing. Then we walk in the flesh. Then sin creeping. If we don't walk in our anointing, sin will overtake you. That's the only victory you will ever have is walking close to God. And that anointing on your life is your victory. No prayer life, no victory. No prayer life, no victory. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 say, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified, I set you apart you, and I ordained and appointed you. He telling Jeremiah, a prophet to the nations. But that's the same thing God's saying about you. Because I don't know if y'all ever thought about it. In creation, everything we see on this planet, God spoke it how? How did God create it? By speaking it. 
There's only one thing on the planet God is speaking in existence, that's you. Everything he spoke, let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. But when he came, he formed Adam. In Jeremiah, I formed you in the womb. Psalm 139, 13, 16, say for you were formed in the inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. So God formed you by hand. You was God's masterpiece. When the Bible say masterpiece, workmanship, created unto Christ Jesus, a good work, that's him forming you. That shows you your, your worth and your value. He didn't speak it. He took his time. It formed you. So you are important to God. Everything else he spoke, anything we go outside and see the animals, he called them for. But you, he formed us in our mother's womb. He ordained you. He appointed you. He know what he got for you. He know who you are. But we don't know that because we don't seek him. You know what I'm saying? But the enemy know God expresses himself through his kids. So he know under the anointing, he can't do nothing with you. He can't do nothing with you. And in these last days, the devil throwing out the, we ain't seen nothing yet. And for us not to give up and not to fall, we got to walk into anointing with the Holy Spirit. If we don't walk into that, y'all, we ain't, we ain't going to win. You know what I'm saying? We're going to fold up because in our flesh, like Jesus said, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. We can't do nothing in this flesh. You know what I'm saying? You got to see Jay seek God. And a young man, we got to seek after God and trust God. And then he, you walk in your anointing, you're going to begin to live. That's where the joy at. That's where the peace at. That's where the strength at. That's where things don't bother you the way it should bother you. That's where the victory at. That's where we can resist sin. We cannot resist sin in our own strength. And to be honest you, with you, we don't want even to resist sin. You know what I'm saying? The bishop say this, and I was just thinking about this. Bishop say, you know what I'm saying? Jonathan, you play basketball on the court. And he'd be like, oh, plumber, you drive. He was saying different um, professions, but Bishop say he knows the anointing. I mean, Bishop say he know how to preach, he know how to pastor. This is what God called him to do. And we know it to be true. But one thing I'm telling you, that I know God's presence. I know the anointing, I know all that. And, and it sounds like bragging, but it ain't that, because I know it because I know when I don't have it. I know what it is to struggle. You know what I'm saying? I know what it is to be in lust and perversion, sexual sin. I'm not talking about in the natural. I'm talking about saved with God. Born again. You know what I'm saying? Walking with the Lord and leadership. I know how it is to be anointed, walking in victory, and for that anointing to live and struggling. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I even remember God was reminding me, save. I was talking to this young lady. This was before Toria. Thank you, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? In sin, open up doors. But I was talking to this young lady, and we was like flirting. It was no anointing. I even began while I was talking to this young lady. This is how much, this is how dangerous it is. I was like playing with her hell, not even knowing a spirit had overtook me. This is saved. And God had opened my eyes. I was like, what in the world? It's scared. I'm like, what are you doing? But when the anointing left, it's all flesh. You have no anointing, all flesh. That's what it is. Open doors will destroy you. Without the anointing, you is an open door. When Moses went into Egypt, I'm going here, but when he anointed, and this is for the men, it said, let every man take up the blood and put it over the doorpost. Every man take a, it's the man's job. If you want a hedge of protection, and I may get ahead of myself, you got to be consecrated for your family. You got to walk in the anointing, it builds a hedge. And I'm going to show you that in the word. When you walking under anointing, the devil can't come in your house any kind of way. And that's the man's job. It ain't a woman, if it ain't a man, there's a woman's job. But whatever we allow, we allow it for our kids. Struggling one time, true story, struggling, struggling. No anointing, keep it real. Because TV is my struggle. I have, to, I have to get rid of TV. You know what I'm saying? Watching movies, doing this, no anointing. T, um, Dion struggling. Coming to school, I mean, he's showing out on a whole nother level. I'm whooping him every day he come home. Tearing him up. And God began to deal with me. I'm like, hold on. You know what I'm saying? God began to deal with me. No, it's because of you just, it's a wide open door. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was my fault because I'm the covering for the house. When I walk, when I see God, when I live a consecrated life and I'm living a life where God, nothing but you, it, it builds a hedge of protection around our family. It builds a hedge of protection around you. So we have to walk under the anointing. 
It's, it's your prayer. Your prayer life is your victory. And y'all hear me saying anointed, but how's your anointed? Spending time with God. Getting back to the altar. We got to get to the place. And God was, God was just ministering to me. And we say this in the church all the time. We always say, God know my heart. We always say, oh, God know my heart. God know my heart. But who cares that God know your heart? Because God know your heart doesn't bring no change. It's you got to know God hard. What is God hard for you? You got to know God hard. Us knowing God hard, don't God know everybody hard. And God was ministering to me. No, my people got to know my heart. What do God like? You know what I'm saying? What do God desire? What do God want for your life individually? What you got going on in your life that God may not like? God is jealous. You know what I'm saying? So you, we got to get real, you know, and I pray this message bring a, a determination in your heart and make up in your mind no matter where you at. Okay, this day forward, God, I'm for to seek you. I'm for to give you 100%. Anything in my life, God, that is unlike you, remove it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, God, help me. Give me, because whatever God called for, he gave you the grace for. If God said, I don't want you doing this, God said, I don't want you doing that. If God said, lay aside the weight and the sin that easily beset you, um, you got to lay it aside. And that's how you come forth. God didn't call us to come to church religiously. He didn't call us to come to church. We are born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. We got to let some stuff go. And I'm preaching to myself. We got to let some stuff go. We got to give God 100%. And we can't do that. But the Holy Spirit, the anointing, when you begin to tap in, God bring you to that place. And that's when you talk to somebody is anointed. Because we don't even like to, if I ain't got no anointing, I don't want to do no witnessing. I don't want to do nothing. It feel like it's just flesh. And that's what it is. It does not produce nothing. So we have to spend time with God. We have to get to that place where God 100% I'm yours. Not just saying, oh, God, you first and all this. But is he first in your actions? Because that's what God looking for. I can say all day, I've witnessed the people on the street. Man, I love Jesus. But God going to judge us according to our actions. Faith without works is dead. So God, if we pursuing God, is we chasing after God? And I pray this message is not, not to condemn you, but to provoke you, y'all. We got to seek God's face. You know what I'm saying? We got to come forth. You know what I'm saying? And even... We're thinking about the blood and the spirit, the two bad witness, we know about the blood, but we got to know about the oil. Because when, when the children of Israel got delivered, people think it was just the blood. It was the blood that stopped them from getting destroyed because they put the blood over their doorposts. So when God released that deaf angel, if it wasn't no blood, it would have destroyed everything. But it was the wind of the spirit that opened up that Red Sea, the anointing that destroyed Pharaoh. So when they got to the Red Sea, God said, what's that in your hand, Moses? A rod represents the anointing. He said, lift it up. When he lift the rod up, that power from that is what opened the Red Sea, what destroyed their enemies. He said, Moses, the enemies you see today, you will no longer see. When you begin to get anointed, when you begin to seek God, when you begin to press in, things will drop off you. Habits will drop off you. Lust will drop off for you. Anything that's unlike God. You don't even have to worry about it. You don't even got to rebuke the enemy. Walk into a place you've been spending time with God rightly. Them demons can't take it. And we have to spend time with God. That's just where the victory is at. Amen? Come on, y'all. Let's get a little some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have to spend time with God. Y'all, let's go to Psalm 91. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, our anointing in our prayer life, your relationship with God is the only thing you got. Trust me on that. I don't care what your list look like. I got him. I got a husband. I got a kids. You can ask some people in the Bahamas to look at their list today. Some of their list has been wiped clean. The only thing they got left is God. God is the only thing. Your prayer life is the only thing you got. Trust me. Don't let you can if you let anything get your prayer life, you are over. You are over. The devil is out to destroy us. And having an anointing on your life is a dangerous thing if it lifts. I remember riding through dating this young lady. Bishop say don't date dating anyways. You know what I'm saying? When we do stuff we ain't supposed to do, it just eat up our anointing. We ain't praying no more, like Pastor Elliot said. We get distracted. Again, the devil will use anything. You know what I'm saying? It just eat up our anointing. I was just driving, a spirit got on me, I ran straight through an intersection. True story, I wouldn't even get up here and tell you that. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I'm an intercessor. So God was showing me the reverse sides. You anointed. But boy, if you open up doors, there's some stuff waiting on you. Y'all, if the anointing on our life, and even if you're a pastor and you watch it by YouTube, the anointing lift on your life, it would destroy you. It's one thing to be on this stage and fall. You may hit your head or break it, but if you're on this roof, God will take you to that level that anointing lift, the devil will destroy you. I'm telling you, I ain't even guessing the devil will destroy you. It'll be caskets after caskets in this place lined up with all our names on it without the anointing. I know when I begin to open up doors, the devil, he, he mad from all the interceding and the witnessing. He forgets nothing. And the devil know, oh, I got to destroy them before God. He know God is merciful. He know God going to continue to war us and draw us back. But he will destroy you and your sin. True story, I listened to this lady, and she was, her husband, it was her dad. Her dad had a, a, um, a huge ministry, and he would preach. And every two years, the church would take up and leave. And she didn't understand it for years. She's like, God, why is that? They'd be in the church. The church would begin to grow. Two years later, he'd take up and, and he would leave. So she was saying, what that one day her husband came and told her dad, which was the pastor of the church, if you ain't living right, God going to judge you. What it was, he was a pedophile. He was molested. So he began to become a pedophile because after he began to let that anointing come off his life, Without the anointing of God, them doors opened up. He began to get in the flesh. Sin crept in the camp. What he did, he couldn't take it no more. He went home, blew his wife's head off. This is a minister. And blew and shot himself. And, the, and his daughter was on the radio testifying how that the way the devil robbed her, her family is not going to rob her family, not her husband and her kids. We have to seek God. This is it's serious stuff. It ain't no joke. We have to seek God. And that's what God wants. God desire for Psalm 91 and we know that verse we know this chapter Psalm 91 we quote it all the time it says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty he who not visits not come sometime but he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This protection of his own. The anointing is your protection. The anointing is your covering. I will say, this person, this is David saying, I will say, because he dwell in the secret place of the Most High, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God and him I will trust. And surely he should deliver you from the snail to fowl and from the perilous pestilence. He should cover you with his feathers and under his wings you should take refuge. His truth should be a shield and a buckler. And you, shall, and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. And we know how the rest of the psalm go. What it's saying, he that dwell, when you're dwelling in the secret place, God begin to release an anointing over your life, and it's a protection. The Bible say the name of the Lord is a strong tower, but it don't stop though. But he that run into it is safe. Don't run into it. It's no automatic safety. We think as Christians, oh, we say we gave our life to the Lord. I am protected. No weapon formed against me going to prosper. But that's a lie. We ain't here with it. We ain't seen people get killed. We ain't seen people get plucked out. We ain't seen marriages get destroyed. I'm like, hold on, God. That's a lot of prospering. You know what I'm saying? If it's just an automatic promise. No, we have a free choice. We have a choice that we want to say, okay, we're going to do this. We know it's wrong. And it opens up doors. So we got to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We got to run into his presence daily. Daily. We got to run into his presence. It's not automatic. Proverbs, Proverbs 18, verse 10, say the name of the Lord is a strong tower, if you want to write that down. And they that run into it is safe. That's why safety is. Because what it's talking about, your anointing, when you fellowshipping with God, when you spending time with God, that anointing on your life, the enemy can't do nothing with it. He's terrified of it. Because when you begin to spend time with God, the anointing in your spirit begin to come forth. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's sin in the spirit, whether it's a deliverance ministry, most Things we're anointed to do, we kin to it. That's why Jesus was our kin, kinsman redeemer. He knew he was tempted with sin, but without sin. And that's what us, what we struggle with. Like me and TJ, we go to the streets, we from the streets, we kin to that. So the anointing is for the streets. But what you come out of, nine times out of ten, you have an anointing for it. But if you want to know what God called you to do, you seek his face. And you will be, he will, that oil will begin to come forth in your life, and you begin to see things and know 
Christianity will come alive. It will be exciting. Because people are like, oh, church born and all that because they look at church as the relationship. No, it's your one-on-one. -on -one. And I try to tell my wife that because the other morning she went to, um, the other morning it was women's prayer. And, um, and Toya been working, like spending time with God. So I said, Toya, why you get up early this morning? She said, oh, I got women's prayer. I said, oh, you thought that was the same. It's not the same. Women's prayer is corporate prayer, or men's prayer is corporate prayer. It's like going on a date with a couple. That is no intimacy on that level yet. Your one-on-one, -on -one, nothing. God want that. I don't care what's going on. God want his one-on-one -on -one with you. If I'm going to corporate prayer at 8, I get up at 5 o'clock by the grace of God and spend time with him individually because when we come together, that is not the same thing. She like, oh, she like, oh, I knew you was going to say that. It's the truth. I'm telling you how to walk in victory because I know this enemy want all of us dead. And it's gonna, it's getting, it ain't going to get crucial. It is crucial. Thank God we live in this country. Because in other countries, they're killing you. You know, we got to have, the, let's go to Acts chapter 1. We got to have the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the anointing. That's the power source. That's the victory. That's where you overcome it. If, if lust taking over, that's how you pull it back in. You know what I'm saying? If it's hard for you to forgive, it's the anointing that'll pull it back in. It's the anointing that caused you to say, I'm sorry. Paul said it like this. Paul said, be filled with the Spirit. He said, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So why did he make that comparison? Because when we drunk, and if anybody in here was a drinker, when you drunk, you don't even care. You drunk, you will say anything, you will do anything, you may get beat down and don't even and wake up tomorrow, don't even know you ain't got in a fight. Or oh, what happened? Because when you drunk, it's the same thing. That's the same way God wants us to be with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit to give us to the place where we so feel with him. The boldness is there. We don't care. God say, go say it. We begin to shout. We begin to decree and declare. We begin to walk in boldness. We get to walk not in fear. So any of us walking that stuff, it's because we ain't under the anointing. Don't need to beat yourself up. You got to be like, I got to seek God. Because the Holy Spirit is our boldness. The Holy Spirit is our confidence. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is everything we need to fulfill God's will. God did not design it for us to do it outside of the Holy Spirit. That's why he told them to wait, to tarry until the Holy Spirit come. Because they, it was nothing going to get done without the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hope I'm helping y'all. Hallelujah. We got to have the anointing. The anointing that destroys the yoke. The anointing that breaks chains. The anointing that set captives free. That's what we got to do. We gotta, it's, it's family members that need to be free. It's people's lives we got to impact. We need anointing. The devil don't like this. He don't want you to be anointed. Because it's our flesh that he used. You know what I'm saying? The Bible said we drawn away from our own, it's personal lust and entice. Our own lust, every flesh in here, I don't care how long you've been saved, your flesh got its own lust. If you ain't walking close to God, even when we walk close to God, the Holy Spirit got to hold that flesh. You see the wrong thing? In the name of Jesus. But if it ain't no anointing, you're going to just lock, shh. Man, look here. Lock right in. It'll be like, oh, God, forgive me. It's the truth. They ain't going to even come in here faking. That's, I'm telling you, that's the only way we're going to do what God called us to do is to walk. We got to cleave to the Holy Spirit. You got to cleave to your prayer life. Your prayer life is the number one thing. You know what I'm saying? If it's social media, whatever the distraction is, you got to be like, God, take it away. God, give me the grace. And he'll give you the grace. God wants you to, God is jealous over you. He's, you the apple in his eye. He wants that intimate relationship with you. So it ain't like he's saying doing it and it's hard. It may be hard at first, but once that, that the anointing begin to rise in you and not, that joy come back, it's nothing that can compare to God. Nothing. Every time I struggle or every time I'm going through, every time I fail God, it's because my prayer life was at a zero. It was no anointing. It's just all flesh. But when I'm doing good spiritually, no, we walk in victory. And that's why the enemy fight us. Ask me, Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. This Jesus talking to the disciples. But wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, 
you have heard of me, for, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they come together, they ask him, saying, Lord, that's us in the flesh trying to figure out everything. Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put in his own authority. This is what I'm after right here. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness of me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. We have to have that power. As fathers in here, we got to have power. Everything after our kids. As mothers in here, singles, young people, we got to have power. And it's available to us. It ain't like God saying, no, God wants you to walk in this. You know what I'm saying? The things you trust in God for, some things, and I had to learn that God even wouldn't release it because I was on a low of a level. You know what I'm saying? Even with the business, God knew I wasn't ready to handle the money that come. He said, well, you got to come up. So as he began to raise me up, things of the flesh began to drop off. And when you got the anointing on your life, it brings maturity. Some things you don't do when you got the anointing of God on your life. We don't have the anointing. We spending money. We doing stuff we ain't supposed to do. And smoking, drinking, sex, and doing everything. But it's the anointing in your life. You need to take your prayer life to the next level. And as you go up higher, God say, come up hither, John. I got something to show you. God ain't never say, come down. He never said come down. As you come up higher, God releases things to you. You got to go higher. And he released the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, and we know that. Everybody here familiar with Acts chapter 2. But what I'm talking about today, it's not the praying in tongues, even though that is huge. That's a part of the feeling. We got to have the praying in tongues. But what I'm talking about is the power. The power of the Holy Spirit. That's when Acts chapter 2 is God began to fill them with the Spirit. God began to release that anointing. In verse 1 in Acts chapter 2 say, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house that they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, this Holy Ghost fire. And one, and one, I love this right here. Thank you, Jesus. And one, listen, look at that. And one sat upon each of them. Not all, one. Each individual anointing. They all got their own anointing. It, it was not a corporate anointing. It was one sat upon each of them. To show you, we all have our own anointing in here. We fit together like a puzzle, but we just in the flesh. If we begin to all of us get into the spirit, you will see this church flow and function because it's, by, it's not by might or power. It's by the Holy Spirit. He will allow us to flow. God brought us here because we all connect. We all day and supposed to be here, but we don't see it because it's our flesh. It's our struggle. The enemy steady attacking because he know we all walk into our anointing. The money, like Bishop said, everything we need is in here. Everything will begin to flow, but it's about a, it's by the Holy Spirit, not by our own strength. Amen. And they were all filled. Sat up, one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak with other tongues that gave them utterance. And I'm the part I'm talking about is the filling part. We got to be filled, not a little oil. It's like you think about. <laughs> Think about your money. You want a little money or you want your bank to be full? Real talk. The same way with God. God wants us to be full. He don't want just a little bit because God know we got a lot of flesh. We come out of some stuff. We come out of our background is, is crazy. We, this church here, we have to have a lot of anointing. We have, it's the truth. Because it's a warfare prophetic ministry. This ain't, we ain't no little play play ministry. We never was. Our leader always dreamed be. So when the devil want to tear up this ministry, he, he, and Bishop walking under anointing, he coming for who ain't. The devil examines our life. Every day he know when you're doing good. When you're doing good spiritually, certain things don't even come to tempt you. But boy, you begin to, that anointing begin to come off, you begin to get aggravated. Now you're snatching at people, especially me. Then the intercessor becomes start coming on the outside. I told you like, boy, you aggressive. I'm like, what you talking about? But I know I ain't been spending time with God. So all the joy becomes flesh, become aggravated. You know, keep it real. Then everything, the lust, everything was in the world. 
come knocking on the door to check you out. The spirits come back and they check the house out and they want in. I'm telling you. Y'all, we may be delivered today, but you have to maintain your deliverance. You have to maintain your anointing. If God give you a drive, God give you an anointing, you got to protect that because the devil going to come after that. Every time I begin to press, <laughs> not depress, <laughs> I'm thinking about my wife. Every time I begin to press, she'll come. Sometimes she'll say, Christian, to the room. Basically, be like, oh, I want to spend time. I'm like, oh, yeah, look, the devil... Because he knows that devil will do anything. He'll use anybody to stop you from spending time with God. He will. He'll use your family. He'll use anything. You're doing good, then this guy at work come. Or this woman come. And, and always know the devil, he don't come with evil things for us. The devil will give you a, go, a good man over a God man. He ain't going to come with no evil man. He'll give you a man that you like. He'll provide. He'll do all this stuff. But he don't have no anointing. So he might be good, but he's definitely not from God. So you got to watch that. The same thing with a woman. Oh, this is a good woman. She take care of me. She do all this, but no anointing. It's just a matter of time before that flesh rise up. And you really see what you got. Amen? Y'all, let's go to Isaiah 5. And this is an illustration God gave me of the anointing and operation. Isaiah chapter 5. Y'all, uh, we, we have a sin problem. Your greatest enemy is yourself. The devil work off of what you can give him. You ain't spending time with God, and your flesh puffed up, you say, oh, I can feed that. You spending time with God, you walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, the devil sit back and watch. Because what you, the anointed to do is strips him right down. It consecrates you. It separates you from darkness. The, that's what the oil do, the Holy Spirit. Isaiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 5. Everybody there? Verse 1. Now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved. Regarding his vineyard, the church is the vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out his stones. Hallelujah. And planted the choice vine or the best wine. Vine. He built the tower in the midst of it. He also made a wine press. And right there, that wine press is for your life. In Christianity, <laughs> let me stop there. It's no escaping the wine press. God, you're going to be crushed, you're going to be broken. That's just a part of Christianity. God has to break us to bring us to the place where he got for us. You have to be broken. There's no running from that. And you don't have to be afraid of that. It's going to be seasons where God is going to break you in your life, but he gives you the grace to go through the breaking. But when you come out the other end, you'll be like, thank you, Jesus. If you had to go through it all over again, the things God had brought me through, if I had to go over it again, it was worth it. It's no escaping that wine press. Your life is supposed to produce for God. That's what it's all about. When we say, Jesus, you can have my life, God say, this, this is my plan. <laughs> Stacy, you feel me. All right, verse 2. And he dug it up and cleared out his stones. That's our heart. He take out the heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh and planted it with the choice vine. He built a tower in the midst, and he also made a wine press in it. So he has expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. Oh, now inhabited, and now God mad. What it is, God is talking about Israel. He said, I bought you out of Egypt. I planted you in the best. I did all these things, and now it's time for you to produce. And now, instead of you bringing forth good grapes, you bring forth wild grapes, which represents sin. And that's the same thing with our life. When we're supposed to be do, produce fruits of the Spirit, we produce sin. So that's where we're at. So we say, so he, verse 2, and he built a tower in his midst, and he also made a wine press in it. So he is expected it, God expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. So God, like, this guy, wild grapes, so God, like, confused now. If, just so to speak. 
We know God don't get confused. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge please between me and my vineyard. God bringing them into account. What more could I have been done? That's what God's saying to us. What more could I have been done? I gave you Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. He shed his blood for us. What more can God do? You know what I'm saying? By his stripes we heal. We know all the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? God, everything is done. Jesus said it's finished. It's all upon us now to walk in victory to get this work done. It's upon, it's upon the believer. Why then when I was expected to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now please let me tell you what I would do to my vineyard. This God dealing with him. I would take away his hedge. That's what sin does. Sin causes the anointing to lift. When you got sin in your life, there's no way you walk in, you indulging in sin, not that we perfect. Let me balance that. Because we all sin and fall short of God's glory. But God knows if you fall down and God knows if you just buck wild in the sin. When you're in the sin like that, the hedge lift. The, the hedge that God got around us is no protection. It's no, no weapon for it that gets me going to prosper and you living in any kind of way. Because people say that. You have to be careful what people say. People will preach anything. Oh, God is my protection, my shield. God love me and you at the club. I heard it on the street. Jesus loved me, yeah, man. Me and Jesus are close. They drunk as a skunk. You have no clue. If you was to die that way, the devil will destroy you. I will take away his hedge, and it shall be burned. And break down his walls, your protection, and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste, and it shall not be pruned or done. But there shall come up briars and thorns. And anybody know what briars and thorns mean in the Bible? It means sin. You know what I'm saying? It's the law of first mention. When you see it in Genesis, where, you know, after they sinned, Adam had to deal with the bri the thorns and all that. That's why they put this, the crown around Jesus' head. That's a whole other story. He was saying he's the king of sin for us. Briars and thorns. And I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. For the vineyard of the Lord, the host of, for the vineyard of the Lord, my phone is tripping. Hallelujah. I will take away his hedge and it shall be burned and break down his wall and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste and it shall not be pruned or dull. Verse 7, for the vineyard of the Lord of the host is the house of Israel and the men of Judah are his pleasant plant. And go to Psalm 80. This ties into the same thing. Skip over to Psalm 80 real quick. Hallelujah. When we have sin in our life, it's no anointing. It just leaves us wide open to, to the enemy. If you ain't seeking God and your flesh is puffed up, no anointing, you wide open. You have open doors in your life. And that's dangerous. That's where we could be destroyed at. You can check your own life. Anyone in here who never was struggling, they know it's no presence. No spending time with God. We know it to be true. It's no presence. No, no time with the Lord. In Psalm 80, verses 4. Amen. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? They were spending no time with God. You have fed them with the beard of tears. You have given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made us a strife to our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine. That's the anointing, and we will be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. They go to vine again. It's talking about his people. You have cast out the nations and planted it. That means God removed everything out of the way. He destroyed the enemies for his own people to plant us. You prepared room for it and caused it to take deep root and it filled the land. God caused us to come forth. The hills were covered with his shadow, God protection, and the mighty cedars with his brawls. She sent out her brawls to the sea and her branches to the river. Why have you broken down her hedge? This God, this is... This is what he asked in God. Why have you broken down her hedge so that all who pass by the way pluck at her fruit? That's the enemy stealing. When we ain't got no anointing, we getting raw. The devil just steal from us and take from us. 
The boar, listen, look at verse 13. The boar out of the woods uproars it. The boar represents the enemy. When that hedge is moved because sin comes in, that boar represents the devil. The devil will come in and destroy you. Whenever you have an anointing on your life and we ain't seeking God, it's just it's an open door. You know what I'm saying? It just invites the devil. He knows that he's slick. He comes in and just run. He destroys you. He destroys the family. He destroys the husband. He destroys the wife. The, the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. Baby, he don't care how old you are. And the wild beast of the field devours it. Return, we beseech you, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see and visit this vine and the vineyard which your right hand has planted. His right hand represents his strength. And it's just an illustration of Isaiah and Psalm. When we, have not, when we don't have the anointing, when we don't walk close to God, we walk in sin. We have a sin problem. And we can't go along with like that last chapter. It's in Revelation 3. But we, we, we have to deal with sin. And how you deal with sin is the altar. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to fight sin. I ain't going to look no more. And you try to manpower that. I ain't going to do this no more. I'm going to forgive her. But that you can't do it. It's not for us. We don't deal with sin out of our flesh. You know what I'm saying? Because not Christ went and died on the cross. He just said, deal with your sin. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need your anointing. When you walk in your individual anointing, you walk in victory. In sin, you walk in victory. In finances, whatever you need, the anointing is connected to it. The Holy Spirit will meet every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Every need will be met. And it's, it's amazing how in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, last scripture, God was do, dealing with the lukewarm church. It's amazing how God said, whether you cold or hot, if not, I will spew you out of your mouth. And as Christians, we walk around. I want anybody in here to go witness on the street and tell somebody you lukewarm. They'll be like, what are you talking about? Because that ain't wrote to the world. God writing to his people. But we can be lukewarm, me included. Make sure it's balanced in the name of Jesus. But we will stay that way knowing God said, I will spew you out of my mouth. That God don't like that. But we were still day after day walk around lukewarm knowing God just said he'll spew you out of his mouth. That's a, boy, that ain't no joke. But what the church did, I'm going to bring that to a balance because I ain't know what that scripture mean. Because what the church did, we be like, man, you lukewarm. Like, it's almost like saying God will reject you. Like, God will get rid of you. CJ, you lukewarm, boom. I'm going to spew you out your mouth. If I don't want to see you ever again, you gone. But it don't mean that, hallelujah. But it means it right here because this is a God dealing with this judgment. He dealing with his church. But let me tell you why. Because the church he was dealing with at that time, so in the spirit, so in the natural. We hear bishops say that all the time. In the spirit and in the natural. This, this, this church had it going on in the natural. They had all the money they need. I'm going to read it. Y'all, we'll read it. But they had all the money they need. They had the finances. They said, God, we don't need you. But in, they, in this city, it was almost like a miracle. Lord, covered under the blood. It is what it is. But in this city, they had three main waters that ran through it. They had the cold water. They had the hot water. And they had a water that ran right through the middle, and it was lukewarm. The cold water, they used it like how we use cold water. You know what I'm saying? Drinking water and all that, it was clean. The hot water is the same way we use it. We take showers and all that. The lukewarm water, they couldn't do nothing with it. And it represents what they used it for was um, sewer water, sanitational. Sewer water, same way the Bible say your righteousness as a filthy rag, it's the same thing. It was sanitational water. It was not good for anything. So what he was saying, people used to come to that part of the country and they used to drink the water on accident. So when they drink the water, they spit the water out. They're like, oh, they spit it out on the ground because it was a lukewarm water. So, and they knew that that was known in that town. So God was dealing with them based on what they knew. 
God say, he not saying if you cold or hot like I'm cold as I don't have no relationship with God and I'm on fire for the God, it don't mean that. But the church said it does. But what it is, it's saying I'd rather you cold because cold water is valuable or hot, I could use that too. But if you lukewarm, you're not good for nothing but sanitational. And what it represents is a selfish lifestyle. When we live selfishly, the only thing that we produce is nothing for nobody. Our flesh produce nothing. So it represents just nothing good for nothing but sewer. So when we ain't spending time with no anointing on your life, your life, that's what your life is. It's selfish, me, myself, and I, we ain't checking for God. And we know that's all of us. This flesh is our worst enemy in here. So when we ain't living for God, there's no anointing, we live for self. The anointing on us, we live for God. We God center. The anointing lift, no pro-life, you self-centered. That's why you don't want to forgive nobody or mad with nobody. Get an anointing on your life. Somebody do something wrong to you, it hurts, but you can get over it. That power will cause you to walk in victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. The list, the list, verse 14, Revelation 3. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, I think, write, these things, the amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15, I know your words that you're neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy. See, they was caught up in self. We got it going on, we don't need God. And I have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Verse 18. I counsel you, this is what Jesus saying, or God the Father said, to buy from me gold refined with fire. Gold refined with fire means your faith, that you may be rich in white garments, which is your righteousness, that you may be clothed in the same clothes, that the shame of your nakedness not be revealed. In the anointing, and anoint your eyes with eye slob. Eye slob is an anointing on the eyes so you can see properly. That's what we saying, anoint your eyes so you can see. See in the spirit, start looking in the natural. That's what the anointing does. When, Sam, when, when Samson fell into sin, you see what happened. They plucked out them eyes. They bind them up. That's when the anointing lift, the, that, that vision go, that lip, you bound up and you become a slave. That's exactly what happened to him. That's exactly what happened to us. When we don't walk in anointing, when we don't walk in God's presence, and we don't see God, we just walk in flesh. We become a lukewarm. That's what God said, I'll spew you out of his mouth. Not that God want to get rid of you. God love you. God don't want you to walk in that place because when you walk in that place, you produce nothing. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit in us is like rivers of living water flowing out. But when you walk in self, it's like rivers of sanitation of water. It's, it's not good for anything. You know what I'm saying? So we, all, we got to walk into God's presence. You know what I'm saying? We got to get back to the anointing. The anointing is like the antidote. It's the cure for sin. The, the anointing is victory. You know what I'm saying? So what God is saying from this message, even if we ain't there, God wants a, a heart. Remember I told you it's not about God knowing our heart. It's about us knowing his heart. His heart is for us to make up in our mind, God, you first. God, you sinner. God, in Jesus' name, anything in my life that don't belong, give me the grace to take it away. You know what I'm saying? You got to get to the place in Christianity where you give God 100%. If you play with God, 60%, 40%. The little bit with this flesh, a little leaven. A little leaven going to leaven the rest of the law. We have to give God 100%. You got to walk in your anointing. You got to come. We need your anointing to come for. If I'm struggling, I'm going through, I need you to get up here and dance and, okay, break some stuff off of me. You know what I'm saying? If you sing and if you rap, whatever, you have your own individual anointing. We need you to be anointed, but God desires that intimate relationship. That's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? God is jealous. God don't like for us to put anything before us. But sins destroy us the anointing. The sin will destroy our anointing. We cannot have sin in the camp. And the way you don't have sin in the camp is the altar. Spending time with God. We have to get back to our first love. Amen? Come on, y'all. Let's stand up and get the Lord some praise and help. I hope y'all was blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, y'all. Let's get the Lord some praise in here. 
Y'all, let's get back to the anointing. Let's, go, let's get back to the Holy Spirit, which is the anointing. Come on, y'all. Let's praise the Lord and heal. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, let me open it. Let's say a prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, God, first of all, God, we repent, God. Oh, God, forgive us what we have, God, just sin, God, in Jesus' name, it fell short of your glory, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, where we strayed away, God, where it's sin in the camp, oh, God. Oh, God, where we don't have time, God, where we distracted, God, we repent, God, in the name of Jesus, oh, God. And, Father, this day, God, it's my prayer, God, that you put such a determination in our heart, God, from this message, oh, God, we will make up in our heart, we will seek after you, oh, God. God, we will put you first, God. And, Father, anything and everything, God, that it's a distraction, it's a weight, it's a hindrance, oh God. God, it calls us, oh God, to walk in the flesh and not walk in victory, God, that, God, you'll give us a heart, a determination, oh God, to seek you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, draw us back to you, our first love, oh God. Fill us afresh and anew, oh God, in the name of Jesus, with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Oh God, that we may seek you, God, daily, oh God. That we may dwell, oh God, in the secret place, oh God. That, God, you will be our delight, God. You are our joy, our pleasure, oh God. God, you the air that we breathe, God. We know all these things, oh God. But, God, in Jesus' name, God, we determine, God, the day we say, oh God, you be first, you be sent to God. God, you be the object of our worship, God. Draw us back into our anointing, God. God, bring us back into the spring of life, God. Bring us back into the joy that surpasses all understanding the peace, oh God. God, the joy of the Lord is our strength, is our victory, God. Bring us back, oh God, where we spent time with you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, where you was our everything, God. Even if we didn't eat, God, your presence, oh God, is, is great, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. So, God, even those who watch it by TV, oh God, oh God, that you will be first. Bring us back into the anointing, oh God, that you created just for us, oh God. We your masterpiece, God. Oh, we worship you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. In Jesus' name. And I want to make a call. You don't have to come, but it's up to you. If you know you need a fresh anointing, you know you need something different. Christianity and grow cold. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's bless the Lord under our breath. Hallelujah. Let's worship him, God. And you're like, God, I need help. But that's what it is. God, I need help. God, I need your anointing, God. Not by might or power, I need your spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, in Jesus' name, God, I just, what you created me for, God. God, what you shed your blood for, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, you the only thing that I have, God. You created everything, nothing promised. God, nothing promised tomorrow but my relationship with you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, if you need that back in your life, if you need him to be first, if you need a grace to get rid of everything that's unlike God in your life, you can come up here. And I'm just going to put a, a cross on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for a fresh anointing. Y'all could just worship under your breath. And you're going to begin to release it. Hallelujah, God. We release a fresh anointing, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Worthy, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. God. We just thank you for a fresh anointing on Pastor Ellie. God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's a dangerous thing for the anointing to lift off our life, y'all. We can't play with that. It can cause death. It can destroy us. God, thank you for anointing me, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, oh God. Y'all, we can't play with 
this Christianity thing. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Share, come out the booth. Double point. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We worship you, God. God, we thank you for a fresh anointing, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We anoint. Hallelujah, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. Thank you for a fresh anointing, oh God. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for the the oil that represents healing, God, from the crown of mama down in here to the sole part of her feet, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. You are worthy, God. God, we release a fresh anointing right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, stir us up in our prayer life, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Take us higher, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 I think that's it. Thank you, Lord. Y'all just worship under your breath. He's going to release it. Just worship under your breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody ain't been prayed for? Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Come on. Excuse me. At least you got to pay attention. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for a fresh anointing, O oh God. Hallelujah. God touches some of y'all. Just worship. You don't need no keyboard. Hallelujah, God, you're worthy. You're worthy, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's just bless. Let's take a few seconds and bless the Lord. With the fruit of our lips. Come on, y'all. Let's bless the Lord. Worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hey, Baku say Rube. Sheba Baba Kose Bebe. Come on, John. He said Baku Rurobo Kose. Come on, y'all. Stir it up. Baba Kuse Rurobo. Sheke Baba Baba. Rebe Kise Rurobo Kose Maku Rebe Baku Rebe She Makua. Hallelujah. Baku Se Rurobo Kose. Hallelujah. God, Baku Rurobo Kose. God, thank you for the victory. God, Baku Se Rurobo Kose. Sheke Baku Rebe Ka. God, thank you for the victory, oh God. Thank you for the victory, God. That's what I hear in my spirit, victory. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, y'all. Don't look at her. Worship. Hallelujah. Worship. Open your mouth. God, you're awesome. God, you're marvelous. God, you're good. God, Father, you're great, oh God. God, you are strength, oh God. You are peace, God. Father, you are joy, oh God. Father, you are redeemed, oh God. You sealed us, God. You filled us, God. You healed us, oh God. Father, in Jesus' name, oh God, you provided, God. You're a refuge, God, a strength. Hallelujah. Come on, John. God, you're jealous, oh God. You're, God, you're Jehovah Jireh, oh God. You're Jehovah Rapha, oh God. Father, you're amazing, oh God. You're King of Kings and Lord of Lords, oh God. You're holy, oh God. God, you chose me, God. You died for me, God. Father, you shed your blood for me, oh God. Father, you kept me, oh God. Father, you're a keeper, oh God. Father, you're a strength, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, you are a defender, oh God. God, you, you answer every prayer, oh God. You hear every cry, oh God. Oh, you're worthy. Come on, John. Just a few seconds. Just a few seconds. Hey. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, y'all. Let the anointing destroy yokes. Let the anointing break chains in you. Hallelujah, God. 
Hallelujah. Let the anointing heal us. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Thank you, Jesus. God, let the anointing shut every door. God, we decree every door to be shut, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, we rebuke every foul spirit in the name of Jesus, God. God, we plead the blood of Jesus, oh God, over every home, oh God. Over John Ministry Global Church, God, over our nation, oh God. Uh, we worship you, God. Father, bring out our anointing, God. Father, bring out my anointing, God. Father, my individual anointing, oh God. Father, what you anointed me for, what you anointed me to do, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, bring forth the oil, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, thank you for paying the price, God, of the oil, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, John. There ain't no keyboard in our house. When the devil come, we ain't gonna have no drums. Come on, y'all. Let's praise the Lord in here. Hallelujah, God. You're worthy, God. God, you're most worthy, oh God. You're awesome in this place, oh God. Oh God, have your way, God. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Three. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are most worthy, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, y'all. You get a Lord in a hand. Clap of praise as we go back to our seats. Hallelujah. Worthy. Worthy, God. We're worthy, God. We're If God touching you, you don't have to move. Hallelujah, God. Oh, as men, y'all, we got to be in position. Yes. Not that we not. Yes. As men, we have to be in position. Yes, it's a powerful thing for us to be in position. Yes. The devil know it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I decree and declare as we get in position, not one family member will be lost. As we in position, not, not one family member, not one son. He said, God, not one daughter, not one grandson, granddaughter, not one will be lost, oh God, as we get in position. God, protect our whole family. I decree and declare that, God, in Jesus' name, God. You faithful, God. Yes, you are, God. You are faithful, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. If you can, you can be seated if you can go back to your seat. If God ministering to you, you're okay right though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ushers, let's get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Double portion. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all, let's prepare our hearts to give. Hallelujah. Uh, the anointing is everything, y'all. God even said in his word, he give us power to get wealth. That's the anointing right there. We need it. 
We need the anointing over our business, over our job. We need promotion. We need increase. We need more than enough. Because if we don't get it, we can't give it. Hallelujah. We need ideas. We need divine appointments. We need the, God to make the connection. That's what the anointing do. It just, just open doors for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anyone don't have nothing to give, you can come up front. Anybody who would like to give and don't have nothing to give, you can come up front. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add to what Elder Plummer was saying. Why, it's, you know, that God wants us. He needs us. Because there's a world out there that needs him. So he needs us. And we so often try to fix everything. As he was saying, try to fix stuff in the natural. You can't fix nothing. God says, if you come to me, I'll make you exactly what you need to be for the world. Exactly. Exactly. So God said, just come. He said, the door is open. The door is open. That's why God had this to come. It's not so much from another voice, but from another voice. Because he was saying, I will use who I'll use. Amen? Amen. So God says, I, what I did with Elder Plummer, I can do with you. Matter of fact, what I did, what, what I'm doing with him, I want to do. Ushers. If you would like to give, if you don't have nothing to give, you can come up front. Odisha is standing up here, y'all. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah.